Hello everyone, Lazy Modding here, and we're going to be going over how to make custom dirt and wear maps um, for Farming Simulator 22 in spec of Blender to Substance Painter and then finally GE. So, if you have not watched how to UDEM or how to apply textures, I do recommend watching those videos. Before you watch this one, I will include a link to those in the description. So for this tutorial, you'll need a couple things to be able to do it correctly. So um, you will need a model, whether it be OBJ or FBX format exported from Blender and make sure that it is UV unwrapped correctly. Um, you will need Adobe Substance Painter and then you will need Vertex Designs Substance Painter um, add-ons. Those will also be included in a link in the description. So I have created this weird wonky shape um, here in Blender. Just threw it together, already you dimmed everything. I exported it out as a FBX. Um, you can see it ob object.fbx there. Uh, I do plan on including a like tutorial folder that will be up on my itch that you can link to directly from a link that's also in the description. So if you just want to mess around with things, um, you can be able to do that fairly easy. So now that I got that exported, we're going to go to Substance Painter um, and load it up. So Substance Painter does cost money um, if you are a decent modder um, that has that uses a lot of it. I do recommend getting it because it is a lifesaver. But so we're going to go up to New, um, and I already have the Substance Painter add-ons installed. I will not be going over those in this video. Um, maybe in a later one, I'll make something to add it in, but it includes instructions and it's fairly easy to figure out. So uh, I don't really want to spend a whole lot of time going over that. So we're going to go to new and then we are going to select giant engine eight. And then it is in my assets folder. And then we are going to go to modding dry tutorial folder dirt and wear maps object.fbx and we're going to load that up we're just going to run with a 2048 by 2048 layout you can pretty much leave everything else how it is so hit ok let substance painter do its thing so you can see now we have that shape in here and like i said earlier it was already u dimmed so um, the next thing we're going to do now is go to um, bake and i've talked about this in the other one but it's part of the process so I figured we just knock it out and plus the updated substance painter kind of changed what it looked like so um, it won't hurt to go over it so um, output size I generally try to double whatever um, format I am in so if I'm doing 2048 I generally try to render with four or, uh, 4k textures so 4096 it just helps um, dilation with I take down a one hit apply dilation or diffusion since I don't have a high poly mesh of this, I am going to use just a low poly mesh. Um, and then we'll load it in via this and we'll click the same mesh we loaded earlier. So that is loaded in. Um, if you're using color ID, I kind of went over that in the other video. Um, so you can kind of view that one to figure out how to do it. So we got all this set. I'm not going to worry about any of these other settings. So then we're just going to hit bake selected textures. It's going to go through and bake. It will flash a bunch of different colors and everything up onto um the screen here and should be wrapping up anytime now and now we'll return to bake mode now you can see the just material of it here um so certain areas kind of have different looks compared to others um adds a little bit of a shadow ao um as you can see you can kind of paint i don't recommend doing that but it happens so, time time so now that we have that done um we are just going to I don't know what I want to put on it. I didn't, basically, if I U dim something, I just put a, like a metal texture on it. Um, that way, so then like I can kind of see what it would look like a little bit better instead of just looking at a real cube. And then before I export it, I just delete that layer. So I added steel painted. I'm just gonna leave it this blue color. It's not really affecting a whole lot. We might change it to make it a little bit brighter though. It's bright enough on my screen, but it's not very bright on the record. We'll go with green 
it works. Um, so next thing, when you after you install those add-ons from um, Vertex Design, you'll have basically six different smart materials. So it'll be in this tab where like half the ball is coming off. Um, so we're going to go and apply the dirt mask first. Um, there is different mask of these. So you'll just have to hover over and make sure you get the right one. So we're just going to take that. And since we're just going to put dirt on everything, we're just going to drop it on the entire object. As you can see, it kind of already set it up to where areas that are close to the ground have a little bit more dirt. Um, and so that's there. So this is the basic dirt for FS that just automatically gets generated. You can make a lot of different changes with this. And that's what we're going to kind of go over um, on how to kind of take away, add dirt, etc., stuff like that. So one thing I like to do because in crevices and stuff, dirt kind of piles there. Um, so when we get talking here, I'll kind of try to bring this menu out so it's a little bit bigger here. Um, so you can see I kind of went in and it added its own layer here that is separate from the paint. So there is the shape without any paint on it. Um, and then it adds its own layer. And then you can technically change the color of dirt. I just leave it as what it is because technically if you want to change it, you can change it in GE and it's just much easier. Um, and then you have a mask over here and also a mask here. Um, most of the time I just use this mask here and just bounce between white or black. Uh, but so now that that's on there, um, I'm going to right click on this and actually go to add generator and it's going to bring up this menu down here, this properties generator, and it'll have you select a generator and we're going to be looking for, uh, dirt right here. And then it's going to kind of change what it does. Um, so it's going to add a little bit more dirt around the crevices and stuff. So like see a lot of dirt right there, a lot of dirt around the edges, um, kind of all around where shapes kind of intersect where dirt would pile up at right there, etc. Um, but you might notice it took away dirt from like the rest of it. Um, but you can still change this. So like, honestly, to me, this is a little bit excessive. So we're actually going to take the dirt level down. We're eh, that, that looks pretty good. Um, that looks all right for what we're doing. So you can play with all these settings, of course. Um, not really, um, there's no set values on it because things just kind of change. Um, if you dirt contrast, you can change it um, depending on your liking, of course. You can add more where it looks like it's more like scratches and stuff and masking around edges. Um, I don't, I've never really messed with that because I just haven't really needed it. So, um, but yeah, so that is basically adding that dirt to it. Most of the time, this is what I use. There's also, um, if you go to back to add generator, there's something called world space. Um, but it doesn't, I don't know. I've not had good luck with it. But basically, it just positions to where faces that are facing down get covered in dirt. So like a trailer, like the underbelly of a trailer or something where you could add um, dirt a little bit easier there. But like I said, it just kind of, looks kind of weird because like it doesn't I mean if you add it on um, and I'll go over that in a minute but so um, I'll just hide this layer for the moment so as you can see right now we don't actually have this dirt layer that Giants uh, the add-on created but so now we actually have to go in and just basically make these layers to where they overlap and the best way I've learned to do that is if you go over here to where it says normal um, that's just basically where it makes that this layer itself not have an alpha um so no transparency on it so if you go over to here and go down to linear dodge add that is the one i've found out to be the best where it just kind of adds transparency to the layers above it so it all kind of just runs together so now you can see we got the original dirt um, that's on here and then along with the dirt that we added with the uh, generator there and then if we go to world space normals and add that on, you can see it's not selected to linear dodge add. So we'll change it to that. And now it's pretty much pretty dirty. 
Um, so any faces that face down are pretty much coated completely. Faces that are up that aren't around edges are fairly um, empty. So like I said, I don't really use World Space Normals a whole lot. Um, I just don't really think it looks the best. Um, most of the time that dirt generator will do pretty good. Um, and then if you have, if you ever do need to paint, um, on it, you can turn on this manual paint layer here. I generally, once again, try to do linear dodge add to it. And then you can just kind of actually, this might actually have to be normal, um, to it. And then basically to mask, you can actually, hang on, I was wrong. Um, so actually correction to that last step um, I don't ever really use the manual paint I forgot how I did this but I go up here and click the mask and then like basically you can just kind of mask off most of the time I don't know what is going on right now um, but like if we add paint boom it'll mask it off um, so generally if you paint black it adds to the mask if you do white, it takes away from the mask. Um, so, yeah. So, um, whoops, I did not want that. Um, so, we're just going to kind of go here and then we'll just do something funny. Wash. Eh, it works. So, uh, I don't know if you guys remember that from 19 or not. Um, but, yeah. So that's, that's supposed to say wash me. It's not very good, but I don't care. Um, so now that we have that done, now we can actually just move on to creating our wear map. Um, depends on what you're doing. Um, if you're doing a trailer that has wood on it, you'll want to like color ID the wood, um, a separate color. So when you apply the, uh, wear mask, it doesn't affect the wood. Um, because basically the wear mask does nothing but show metal. So it would be kind of weird as the trailer ages that the wood starts showing metal. So Most of the time I just generally try to hide the dirt mask. Because um, the way it kind of overlaps, um, the wear mask will take away the dirt. So um, there's not really a whole lot of messing around. But you'll find wear mask. There's two of them on here. I just generally take the first one. Um, it's not as strong as the second one, um, but if you can see now there's like little chips, little edges and stuff like that. Uh, once again, um, you can kind of go and just kind of increase like um, everything on it. So like I, don't, I like I said, I don't really mess around with too much um, I just generally just go here right click on the mask and do metal edges um, and it kind of just goes and puts edges where it's metal a little bit stronger um, if you want to push it up some you can do that make it a little a little bit more rough um, and same thing kind of goes um, when um, you paint on it, um, I do that on like areas where it's like a little bit rougher. So like if something was consistently sliding across this, I would do this and it would just make that entire area kind of exposed. I need to hit quit hitting those keys. Um, if you don't like those or the brush texture, you have different ones. So like you can do cracks, um, which it flipped the AO on me, but um, so there's there's a bunch of different things that you can take um, and kind of add on here. So um, just be careful around edges. Sometimes it overlays kind of weird. So um, yeah, so we'll just do something on this side. Eh, ouch, makes sense, I guess. So now that we have that done, um, we will actually reshow this dirt mask. So now you can see that like the wear mask overrides it. Um, generally, I try to do the wear mask over the dirt because that's how it'll look in game. Um, and if you can get it to look like this in game, it helps. So you know exactly what it looks like. So, 
So now that we have our dirt and wear map um, attributes added to our shape, next thing we need to do is to export those out. So we'll go to the file tab, um, go up to export textures, and then we'll load in this um, path is already set. We're going to change this to Giants Engine uh, Vehicle um, here. And then that will be pretty much set everything there. Um, just make sure that everything here that you need is ready to be exported. And then you can just hit export. It will export those out. So then if we go here, um, we do have our two PNGs. Um, sometimes Giants Editor does not convert the G PNGs to DDS format properly. Um, so that's what I have open over here on to the right screen is uh, the texture tool from Giants Ed or uh, Giants Developer Network or whatever it's called. You can I'll try to include a link to it in the description. So if you just highlight these two, both the normal and spec, move them over here, take them to texture tool .exc, um, and drop it on there. Okay, boom, you have DDS formats now. And so then you just put those on in um, GE. So now we do have our maps built and rendered out. So now we can move, put them on GE. So I did export it out of GE already and we have it here. So first thing that I want to do is quit selecting that freaking camera. Uh, and we're going to go here and shader source and then we're going to find vehicle shader. Um, these are in the farming simulator 22 folders. Uh, so then we'll open the vehicle shader and we're just going to put a color mask on. Um, doesn't really necessarily do anything important. It's just it works better to what we are trying to do. Um, so. Next thing we're going to do is re-click back on this and we're going to import our gloss map um, so we're going to go to dirt wear textures so our gloss map is actually the spec map or vmask or whatever it's called um, on your sense most time substance panel will export it as spec um, and then we will just add that on there and then normal map um, we will go and import normal map as well now it's kind of all imported um, script wise there's your dirt and then um, scratches the one the dirt overlays it which is odd sometimes it does it backwards but if we set that to zero now you can see that all the scratches appear and then previously all the dirt was so um, yeah so that is kind of how you build custom dirt and wear maps for Farming Simulator 22 mods. Um, make sure if you enjoy the tutorial, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button so you can get notified of new videos, etc. Stuff like that. Um, but yeah. Anyway, hopefully, yes, this made sense. If you do need a little help, um, do feel free to reach out to me on Discord. That is by far the easiest way for me to communicate um with y'all so anyway other than that have a good one hopefully this helped and we will see y'all again later